This has been a long time coming. Here is my Design Lab UX Bootcamp review. I'm going to talk fast because I have a lot to say. Use the timestamps to skip around. It is January 2024. I finished Design Lab's UX Bootcamp in March of 2023. I started in April of 2022. Knowing what I know now, would I recommend Design Lab's Bootcamp to my past self? The answer is no. Maybe it's not a big fat no, but it's at least a good medium sized no. And just because that answer is a no for me doesn't mean it might not still be a viable option for others. So keep watching. I'll explain why it's a no for me and why it might be a yes for others and what I would consider for myself instead. First, I want to share a little bit about my background. I have been drawing as long as I can remember. In 1993, at the age of 12, I wrote my first computer program on an Apple IIe in basic. That tells you how old I am. My dream job for many years was to draw the amazing Spider-Man comic book, much to my parents' dismay. Given my aptitude for math and technology, I went to Northern Illinois University in 1999 to study computer science. It was the most affordable four-year university in the state and happened to be 40 minutes from where I grew up. But a semester and a half later, I was an art major just like I wanted to be. I studied a form of arts called time arts. It's so obscure that when I put it on my resume, people assumed that I made a typo and meant to write fine arts. And that happens so often that I've just changed it to interactive art lately. Time arts has to do with anything not static, changing over time. It may or may not be interactive. It leans more towards studio and experimental art and not commercial art. I got to use video, animation, prototyping software, and sound. What I didn't learn was stuff like kerning and visual layout. In some ways, the stuff I studied was a precursor to modern interactivity, so I have some existing familiarity. However, my timing was kind of awful. I completed my Bachelor of Fine Arts in 2004. That's one year before the iPhone would make its appearance. That's a year before Facebook was available to everyone. That's three years before even half of all internet users had a broadband connection. Long story short, after stints as a licensed realtor and a substitute teacher, I spent the next 18 years in manufacturing and logistics. I spent more than half that time trying to figure out how to get out. Sometimes life just happens and you have to make the best of it. Eventually, I found my way out through Design Labs Boot Camp. In February 2022, I took Design Labs Foundations course before I was enrolled in their UX Academy. My review will be primarily on Design Lab UX Academy, but I want to talk a little bit about Foundations too. Foundations is a precursor to Design Labs UX Academy. I might call that UXA from here on out. There's an application process to get into UXA, but I've never heard of anyone failing it. Foundations is a four to eight week course to familiarize yourself with Figma and some other design basics if you don't have that experience. At the time I took Foundations, the course fee was $500 and it would be applied towards your UXA tuition if you continued down that path. In hindsight, I probably could have passed the UXA admissions without the Foundations, but since that money was applied toward the tuition, it only cost me an extra four weeks and it was kind of a good way to dip my toe in the water. When I enrolled in the April 2023 cohort, the tuition was $6,000. The next month, Design Lab revised the curriculum and increased the cost to $7,000. It's still one of the more affordable UX boot camps out there. If you chose a part-time track at 20 hours a week, this would take 30 weeks. And if you do full-time at 40 hours a week, Design Lab says it takes 15 weeks. You have 15 one-on-one -on -one sessions with an assigned mentor. That's once a week if you're full-time, every other week if you're part-time. There are two phases to the program. The first half is dedicated to like your educational foundation and the design of a single responsive website. Right now they teach mobile first. They give you three different prompts to choose from and you conduct user research. You make mood boards, personas, wireframes, all these kind of stereotypical UX deliverables. You do do this in a linear model because presumably you've never done this before. So there's an understanding when you get out or when you talk to people like, this isn't how it always works, but you've got to start somewhere. In the second phase, you do three capstones and you create a portfolio. The first capstone will be a responsive website like in phase one, but now they're not holding your hand. You just have two weeks to do it. 
Design Lab recommends you work with a real-world client. I did not. I'll maybe talk more on that later. The second capstone is an add a feature project in which you find an existing app or website. You find a shortcoming in it through research, hopefully, and then you build a new feature for that platform to fix the shortcoming. And finally, the third capstone is you design an end-to-end -end mobile app from scratch. You start with a blank page, you, fit, you pick a problem to solve, and then you make the design that solves that problem. At the time I took the course, you had two weeks for each of these projects if you were full-time. Since then, it has been adjusted so that there's a little more time for the end-to-end -end app and a little less time for the added feature capstone. That kind of makes sense because if you, when you do the add a feature, there's a UI built for you. There's a platform. You don't have to come up with all these things from scratch. You're just kind of shoehorning in an existing feature and you're reverse engineering all the graphic stuff. When your capstones are done, you have a week to build a portfolio, and then you have another week to polish your case studies before you submit your portfolio. Upon successful completion, you get 26 weeks with a career services mentor to help you find a job. And that is a glance at the program. So why did I choose Design Lab? The cost was one reason. At $6,000, Design Lab came in about $4,000 less than the next comparable boot camp. At about $3,000 now, Avo Academy is less, but if you add in their Career Jumpstart program to make it more comparable to Design Lab's program, you're right back at $7,000. The time frame. Design Lab advertises you can finish in four months and have a job in six months or less. That was attractive because I only had so much money to invest and I knew I was going to have to quit my job to do this. At the time, I was working 48-hour weeks on second shift and I knew that taking on a 20-hour-a-week education was not going to be realistic given my responsibilities outside of work. The mentorship was another big reason. Not many other boot camps offer this one-on-one -on -one mentorship where you work with the same mentor. You kind of develop a rapport, so that was unique. Group crits, another somewhat unique feature of Design Lab. Students would meet in groups of up to 10 along with a facilitator to provide and receive feedback on their projects. You would do this once a week if you're full-time, every other week if you're part-time. Tuition guarantee, this was a big one. As long as you finish the course on time, you met certain requirements, you are eligible for getting your money back if you failed to secure a job offer in six months or less. To me, that at least signaled that they believed in their product. There are a lot of catches to this. It's really hard to do. Uh, one such catch is you could receive a job offer for a job as little as 20 hours a week, and that counts. Um, another catch is You've got to have all your group crit sessions. You've got to fulfill all your mentor sessions. You have to do all the career services assignments and meet with your uh, career services mentor on time. And, and there's other things. I think one of the other catches is if you apply for the tuition guarantee, you have exactly one shot to say, hey, I met all these requirements. Here's my proof. And if you screw up when you submit that, then no refund. Social proof was another aspect. I feel like I had done enough research to determine there were other graduates from this program, that they weren't just outliers, that if you stayed the course, you would find yourself in a new career when you finished this program. So now let's talk about what didn't quite work out. The 15-week timeline at full time is unrealistic. It's just plain unrealistic. If you're putting in 80-hour weeks instead of 40-hour weeks, maybe you can kind of rush through it and get it done, but that's not a healthy workload. You're going to approach of burnout. I felt like, especially towards the end, I was always on the verge of burnout. I've shared the expectations of the two-week capstones with working professionals, and they have all said that that's fairly ridiculous, especially for the idea of building an end-to-end -end app on Scratch. Like, granted, you're not developing and shipping this. You're doing the design, but you're doing this all alone. You have advice and feedback from people, but you're, you're the sole product designer 
of that project, and you have two weeks. This is my single biggest criticism of the entire program. The timeline is unrealistic. I started in April 2022. My portfolio was finally approved in March 2023. I know very few people who completed the curriculum on time. The vast majority seem to finish months past their scheduled date. I know some people who have gone well over a year. The tuition guarantee was a thing that didn't really work out. Since the timeline doesn't work, I didn't get the tuition back guarantee. There are many requirements you have to meet, as I mentioned. And about halfway through, maybe two-thirds through, I realized like I didn't want to rush this education. I wanted to get these concepts right. I wanted my projects to be solid. So in favor of taking more time to get things right, I kind of forfeited that early on. The cost. Even though the cost of the program was only $6,000, because it took me so much longer to finish, I accrued that much more in debt. And I know several people who took even longer to complete than I did. So you might be in a different situation if someone's covering your room and board or whatever. I don't have that luxury. I'm a single homeowner. I've got to keep the lights on. The timing. The timing was, was just awful. Again, this kind of felt like Many other moments in my life, it felt like when I got my degree, it felt like when I got my real estate license in 2005, if you were alive and potentially buying or selling a home then, then you know what I'm talking about. There's maybe not been a worse time to try to get into this field. I started in April 2022, which is the beginning of Q2. It was also when a lot of layoffs in UX and tech in general got started. And overall, there has been a shift in the industry. The bar for entry is that much higher than it was before. I'm, I'm not sure there has been a worse time to get into this field. Someone please tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, the case studies. So you develop three case studies for your portfolio projects. Design Lab has a very specific rubric that you have to follow. And their rubric results in a very long case study that's mired in details that hiring managers and recruiters don't want to see. My first submission didn't pass because I kind of caught wind of this fact that people want to see shorter case studies, so I made shorter case studies. And then my portfolio didn't pass, so I had to submit it again with the longer case studies. Then I was approved, I graduated, and then I went back to shorten all my case studies again. And in fact, right now, I'm looking to iterate and make them even a little shorter than they are. What did work with Design Lab? Let's talk about that. Uh, the basics are solid. I got a foundational education in product design. I would say the education skews a little more towards research and designing flows and a little less towards UI design. And depending on how you define UX, that might sound ideal. However, if you're looking at job descriptions these days, most of them specifically say something along the lines of creating beautiful visual experiences. So you better be good at both of those things. The people. I met some fantastic people in Design Lab. At some point, I realized I was going to have to get out of my comfort zone and just dive into networking. At one point, I'm told I was the most active person on the Design Lab Discord server. Since graduating, I've continued to meet people from other boot camps and from more traditional backgrounds. So I suspect I would have met a lot of the same people even if I hadn't gone through this boot camp. One of the people I met during this time was Robin Arcega. She is a design lab group crit facilitator who hosts UX Tea Time events. I attended a number of these events, and after attending, I think it was her UX Tea Time happy hour, I was kind of inspired to start hosting my own virtual events, and now I have done several of those. I don't know if that's a decision I would have otherwise come to. Uh, that was just kind of a of a fortuitous thing that happened, so um, I'm happy that that happened. It's a decision that has contributed to my growth in the UX community, I feel. The narrative that Design Lab offers maybe gave me the push I needed. Although I now feel that the timeline claimed by Design Lab is deceptive, if I hadn't been sold on the idea that I could have a new career in 10 months, I might not have made that leap. So even though the risk has not yet paid off, I feel like it will eventually, so long as I persevere. Who would I recommend Design Lab to now? If you have the financial means to pay for the program 
and cover your living expenses for 18 months, then by all means take the Design Lab boot camp or something similar. I do feel like the problem overall is that they overpromise and underdeliver. I don't know if that's just the evils of marketing. I would love for them to take some of that marketing money and put more of it into building a better product because you're going to get people like me coming out of it telling people what they thought about it at the end. So I would love to see them make some changes there. I think it's kind of shady that they recommend ways to finance the cost of tuition. I had my own way to pay for the tuition. This is a tangent for another time, but I feel like the ease of getting loans for education has just helped to drive up the costs. If you had more money, I would maybe recommend an accelerated master's program. Is the additional money you pay worth that? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like a degree from an accredited institution looks better. At the end of the day, though, it's going to be your portfolio and examples of your work that will matter most. So what would I tell my past self? This is hard to say, but I would probably try to talk myself into doing some sort of self-study curriculum. I considered this option briefly. I chose the boot camp for the structure. I needed something to help me stay accountable. Because the self-study course is going to require so much self-discipline, it would just be that much more challenging. I would maybe look up the syllabi offered by other boot camps and universities and then just pick those topics and subjects, do deep dives on them. I'd dive into networking much earlier, and I would ask seasoned professionals where they would suggest getting started given limited resources. As I was writing this review... I came across one of Jeremy Miller's weekly Ask Me Anything posts on LinkedIn, and I asked if someone was in the early stages of learning about UX, and they came to you and said, I can't afford a boot camp, I can't afford a master's degree, I can maybe come up with $2,000 for books or video courses, what are the first three resources you would point them towards? And Jeremy came through with quite a few examples. I have reposted the conversation on my LinkedIn profile as of January 7, 2024, and I will also have those resources on my website along with this video. That's johneverettmorton.com. So check that out. I'm not going to rattle all those things off in this video. Going the self-directed route is going to be challenging, but for my financial situation, it probably would have been better. If I knew for sure In three months from now or less, I was going to land a remote role that paid $100,000 a year, then I'd start to feel better about all the money I've spent and the debt that I've accrued. But if in six months from now or longer, I'm accepting a position that pays $60,000 a year and I have to drive 90 minutes to Chicago, I'm going to continue wishing I had done something else. If you live with your parents or a partner and can write a check for $7,000 or more to a boot camp, and you can get by on part-time or no income for 18 months, then maybe go ahead and go the boot camp route. But know that you will need to put in time outside of that boot camp situation to network and continue learning. There's no way around that. If you can make time for completing a volunteer project and ship something after working with other real people, that's going to help you immensely. Some examples would be Tech Fleet or Develop for Good. I'm sure there are lots of other options out there. Whichever route you go, this is going to be something of a lonely journey. And that's another reason to throw yourself into networking early because then you can kind of meet those people who are going down this path with you. You are going to see your friends and family so much less often than you are used to seeing them. And you are going to spend a lot more time reading, a lot more time learning things on the computer, things that maybe you don't want to learn. I'm fortunate enough that I have been working with technology for as long as I have, that I understand things like the difference between relative dots per inches and absolute dots per inches. And those are just like little things that will trip you up if you never had to worry about dots per inches. I'm getting off track. Too many tangents. Okay, let's continue. All in all, I don't regret going down this path. This is just what I would do differently knowing what I know now. It has been so much more difficult than advertised. And if you are just getting started in 2024, I fear that you're going to face even more challenges than I have. 
I'm going to persevere and hope that that's part of the equation that puts me ahead. Because the truth is, I know quite a few people who have thrown the towel in halfway through, three quarters of the way through, or even who have completed that program and said, you know what, I just can't keep looking for this role any longer. I'm going to do, I have to do something else. I hope this video has been helpful and informative. If you have further thoughts or questions, please leave them in the comments. If you are a prospective UX bootcamp student and I've just saved you thousands of dollars, please consider buying me a coffee because I could sure use it. And as always, thank you so much for watching.